In this second part of basic option strategies, I'm going to show two examples of how to hedge with options. These are naive hedges because they are one-on-one -on -one positions, meaning one share of stock is hedged with one call. And so as you'll see, they do not necessarily lead to a perfect hedge where the loss in one position is exactly offset by the gain in the other. So here we go. The first example here is a protective put hedge where for every share of stock you own, you buy a put to hedge it. Now recall, if you buy a put, you make money if prices go, go down. And so if you own a stock, your fear factor, of course, is that the value of your stock portfolio is going to decrease. So to hedge it, you buy a put. So when prices go down, your put would make a profit. That profit would help to offset the loss on your stock position. So in calculating the hedge profit here, we're going to look separately at the profit and loss outcome on your cash position, which is your stock portfolio position, and then the profit and loss outcome on your long put position, the put option that you purchased. As an example, let's say that you purchase the stock for $10. Afraid the price will go down, you purchase the put option with an, a strike price here of 10 You paid $2 to purchase the puts. If the stock price goes down from 10 to 8 as I show up here, you can see that on your stock portfolio, you would lose $2 per share right here. On the other hand, on the put option that you purchased, here's your put profit function right here. You paid $2 to buy the puts, so that's a, a negative cash flow, which you see right here. That's your negative 2, plus the intrinsic value of the puts, which is E minus S. That's 10 minus 8, which gives you 2. So the $2 of intrinsic value, net of the $2 that you paid to purchase the puts, leaves you with a zero outcome here. So then, we're going to add the profit on the stock to the profit on the option, and that comes out to be negative 2. So this, that's the outcome that you see here. When the stock price at the end of your holding period is, drops down to 8, you lose 2 on your stock portfolio, you have a 0 outcome on your put option, and then your combined profit is a loss of 2. Now, but check this out though, if the stock goes down all the way to zero, that's an extreme case where the stock has become worthless. You would have lost your entire $10 on the put option, oh, sorry, on the stock portfolio. However, you would have made 8 bucks on your put option because as you know, the intrinsic value when the stock goes down from 10 to zero is actually equal to 10. So that's E minus S of zero that gives you 10. But minus the $2 in premium you paid, that gives you a net profit on the put position of $8. So as you can see, rather than a maximum loss of $10 on your stock portfolio, you, you now would have lost only 2 bucks right here. Your profit on the put added to the loss on your portfolio. Now, interestingly, observe that based on the transaction data used here, you actually do have a floor on your loss outcome when you look at your hedge profits. In this example, you can't lose any more than $2 on your entire uh, hedge portfolio. And so protective put hedge does provide a floor below which you can't suffer, suffer uh, a worse uh, loss. Uh, fortunately, actually, it does allow you uh, quite a good potential to make money if things turn around, assuming, in fact, stock prices go up. As you can see here, when stock prices go up, you still have profits to make. So it doesn't deny you the luxury of uh, putting a smile on your face should uh, the market go on a bull run. And when we plot this, you can see, indeed, that as stock prices go up from left to right, your hedge profit increase without bounds. As stock prices go down, your losses are truncated. It doesn't get worse in this example than the level where this line is established. Second hedging method is a covered call hedge. In a covered call hedge, for the stock that you own, 
you sell a call instead. So this is the type of hedge portfolio described in the Black Shoals option pricing model. So here is if your stock portfolio goes down in value, the premium you receive from the sale of a call would help to offset the loss suffered on your hedge portfolio. So here again, we're going to look at the profit and loss outcome on your stock portfolio separately from that of uh, your call option. And then we're going to add the two profits to see how we pan out. As an example, again, you purchase a stock for 10 bucks. And afraid the price will go down, you sell a call with a strike price of 10 bucks. You sold it to receive two dollars. So now, say the stock goes down from 10 to 8. Again, your loss here is two bucks per share. But on the call that you sold, as you can see here, your profit function would consist of the call premium you received. It's a positive cash flow. However, you would have to suffer the loss of this intrinsic value to the guy who purchased the call option from you. So in this particular case, you receive $2 in call premium. That's it right here. However, with the stock going down to $8, as you can see, the call option would be out of the money. So the guy who purchased it from you will not exercise it. And so you get to keep the $2 you received at the outset. So the $2 you received at the outset, which is your overall call option um, premium right here, added to the loss of two that you suffered on your stock portfolio, leaves you with a net outcome of zero. And that's what you see right here. If the stock price at the end of your holding period drops down to eight, your loss on the stock portfolio here is two. Your outcome on the short call the call that you sold is a positive two. The combined profits is zero. Observe here, in the worst case scenario, the stock go becomes worthless. Then you would have lost your entire $10 investment in the stock. However, the guy who purchased the call option from you will not exercise it. And again, you get to keep the put premium, which helps to soften the blow here from what would have been a loss of 10 to now just simply a loss of 8. So as you can see, while this is not a perfect hedge, it does reduce the damage done to your stock portfolio. Unfortunately, as you can see, if during the period of the hedge, stock prices actually go up, as I show here, the profits that you would have made, the huge profits that you would have made on your stock portfolio would now be significantly reduced by the losses that you will suffer on the call that you wrote. So that you do actually have a ceiling on, on a profit if in fact the market turns around and heads into a bullish phase. So to wrap this up, you can see here that as stock prices go up, you actually have a ceiling on the profits that you would make. However, keep an eye on the downside because when you hedge, you're hedging the, the downside risk. If prices go down, you will still lose money, although this loss would be softer than would have been the case if you had not hedged. But one important point needs to be made, and that is if I may go back to the numbers here, if in fact by using a covered call hedge you would still suffer a continuing loss as stock prices drop. Whereas if I go back some more, in the case of a protective put, you actually have a floor on this type of hedge. Why would anybody use the covered call when the protective put would actually limit your losses? Well, to answer that question, observe here that with this protective put, if there is a marginal decline in the price of stock, say from this $10 that you paid to purchase the stock to $8, you already would have a negative hedge profit. In other words, you do have a loss on your portfolio. With such a marginal decline in the price of the stock, if I advance to the covered call hedge right here, covered call hedge, you will see that the same drop from 10 to 8 
leaves you with zero outcome. In other words, your losses do not begin until the stock would have dropped down to about six dollars as you can see. So with a marginal decline in the price of the stock, if that's your expectation, a covered call may actually be the better way to hedge. And if I go back to protective put here, if you are anticipating a significant decline in the price of the stock during the period of the hedge, as I showed up here, then a protective put would work out much better because your losses would be truncated, which would not be the same if you use the covered call hedge. So that might be viewed as the motivation in terms of the choice for either a protective put hedge or, as I show later here, a covered call hedge, which tightens your gains and doesn't have a boundary on the lower side for your losses. And this concludes this second section of the presentation.